when you start to work with the refinement um, analysis and repair of something like a simple component, uh, the idea is that you're going to move from, again, something like what we have on the left here towards something uh, like what we have here on the right. Uh, this is actually multiple mesh objects that we're going to try to treat as one element. Okay, so the case of the component that we're developing here, right, this is really, really simple stuff, but uh, let's just continue with it. I'm going to just take this and move it down a little bit. Now, the component, you can see, um, has a hole um, at the top and a hole at the bottom. And it has this 3x3 three three mesh plane that we constructed and modulated the edges. Okay, and we've done that at the top and bottom. I mean, you know, we just mirrored uh, essentially this guy down. Again, the neat thing about meshes is that they can be so fast to model with. We know that we have a hole right here. So let's go to mesh and again look at mesh primitives. This time what we're going to do is build a box. So I'm going to build a box and whenever I construct it, I'm going to snap. Now if you notice, if you're using Rhino 5, um, when you're snapping, this isn't a point snap anymore. This is actually something referred to as a vertex snap. Um, that will need to be turned on in your object snaps or O snaps down here on your vertex. Now when I run the command and I click, you can see that I can just drag right out, snapping to my mesh and up. And now I'm able to build right, a connection between the two. Now one thing to note is that whenever you run that command, just like right, when you ran your mesh primitive command, you have an option for the number of faces. So here in X and Y, we would definitely need to have just one face. That way this mesh has only one face in X and Y. But in Z, you can see that I've changed my settings so that I have two faces. Now, if you remember, the number of faces that you have will, um, will indicate the level of smoothing, right? the quality of the smoothing that occurs uh, whenever you convert to subdivision surfaces. Okay? Now, if you would like, you can run the mesh primitives box and set the Z to 1. And let's run this again and see what happens. I'm going to go click, click, and up. And now you can see I only have one face. So either is fine, um, but the important thing is just to understand that um, the number of faces will indicate whether or not these will seam back together. Now, what I'd like to achieve is connectivity between this mesh, this mesh, using this box. Now, if you remember our Control-Shift selection, we can just delete a face by clicking on Delete. You can use your, your keyboard to do that and delete. Now, one thing you might um, notice is that when I'm painting around my mesh, I have different colors set for the back faces of my uh, meshes. And that's very, very important because um, as we'll start to see in just a little bit, that um, when you're working with meshes, the, the orientation of faces, that's one of the things that um, is really, really important when you're working with 3D model, or, sorry, 3D printing rather. So let's go ahead and set that really quickly under File, Properties. And you'll see under Rhino Options, there is a drop-down for um, appearance. Actually, I think it's in View now instead. Yeah, it's in View, Display Modes. Now, I'm in Shaded View, so I'm going to open Shaded. I'm wanting to change some settings for my objects, which are meshes.
Um, actually, it's just uh, right here under Display Mode Shaded. Um, you'll see that there is an option for back face settings. In my window, it's highlighted here. And I'm going to say single color for all back faces. So I just want all of my back faces to have the same color. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this up. Uh, for a moment, and before we proceed, um, we're doing uh, really well on time, so I'd like to take a moment to uh, stop um, for a second and um, take a few questions, and while we're uh, taking questions, you guys can all go ahead and make sure that you're able to get your single color for all back faces. When you select that, you can then just pick a color. I, I pick a color that I never use in Rhino, um, just so that I, I can always know which uh, what I'm looking at, I guess you could say, in the viewport. So if you have any questions about any of the content that we've covered so far, uh, feel free to go ahead and post those to the mes message window, and, um, and I'll, I'll address those to the group now. hit OK. Now, if you're using Rhino 4, there is in the Mesh drop uh, menu, Mesh Edit Tools, there is an option to delete Mesh Faces. Pick whichever faces you want to delete, hit Enter, and they'll be deleted. Now, once you have Set your back face settings. You should be able to now pan around your object and see which ones are out versus in. So everywhere I have um, the pink color here, that means that those faces are in. So that's in. And if you notice here, um, these are facing the wrong direction. So in order for this to be the outside and this to be the outside, we need the interior of this to be flipped. Now this command is um, consistent with the command in Rhino for flipping surface or curve direction, and you just type in the command flip. And now you can see we have um, our mesh here a bridge joining the top mesh and the bottom. Awesome. Once you have uh, your component working, go ahead and just make a copy of that component off to the side. Well, it looks like uh, everybody seems to be doing all right uh, with the content, so we'll go ahead and proceed. Um, before doing so, I'm going to go ahead and say File, Save, and I'm going to make sure that I save this as a working file. And I'm going to reopen um, the file that we just had again, and um, I'm going to take a look at something really quick, because Let's say, for instance, you wanted this to be your component now. So instead of before we just had this simple mesh, you want to have something a little more complex. Couple sides, a little connection between them. Well, let's right click here and say set multiple meshes. I'm going to click one, two, and three and hit enter. Now, when I zoom in here, what you'll see is that the mesh smoothing is actually not working correct. Because here, along the top edge, you'll see that these are not being treated as continuous, right? There's not smoothing that's occurring here. Here at the bottom, we have the same problem. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on my output and bake. 
Let's take a look at this in Rhino. Select these three, and uh, I'm just going to move them over. And if you notice here, right, these are actually be tr uh, being treated as three separate elements. Right? So the smoothing is working, but it's working per element, right? per mesh. And what we want to do is figure out how we might be able to start to work with multiple elements that are treated as one. And this is referred to as mesh refinement. 